Welcome back. This is our introduction to uh, cognition, which is in our unit with memory. So we'll focus on memory as we go here, but first I want to talk cognition, which is really dealing with the thinking process. So cognition, part one is memory, but I want to start off by discussing, just introducing you to the concept of cognition. As you see here, there's some interesting cartoons about mostly elephants who don't forget or husbands that do um, so maybe they want February 29th as their wedding so they only have to remember every four years uh, or Frankenstein there with the cup on top of his roof because he's dri driven off with his drink on on there but of course with Frankenstein it's his hand too so we all have issues with thinking even someone like Frankenstein, I guess he did have some problems. I want to start off with something we do in class, just to think about this. I mean, what's the best thing you've ever had to eat? And if you think about what that is, try to categorize that or explain it to somebody else. And Torchies is a good example for me to share with people because most people in Houston haven't heard of it or been there yet, but they're growing. Uh, as of the recording of this video, there's three different locations and their tacos are very different um, not regular Tex-Mex they've got a whole mix of flavors and they're delicious really um, we go there quite a lot the three of us so um, if you're ordering from their menu which is distinctive in name and type of taco and the flavoring you're gonna have to go through some cognitive exercising to figure out what it is that you want um, you look up the menu and green chili pork may not sound too bad uh, but trailer park or dirty Sanchez now you're talking about having to figure out what that means um, and you see the independent there there's also a Democrat and Republican well what, what's uh, what kind of talk is a Democrat or Republican I mean I guess I could insert some bad jokes here but what this is really about here is thinking so you may need to look at their menu before you go there the first time so when you step up to the uh, counter to order you're not just staring at this menu that makes no sense to you um, you also need to think about what those combinations of foods uh, and parts of foods and flavorings are going to do to the taste of the taco to try to kind of prepare yourself for what you think that's going to be my best advice is just get two or three of them and try them all they're all good anyway but cognition is this awareness that is brought about by what we think of as the thinking process and then we act and process in a knowing way. Uh, we're using conceptual memories and attentive memory, perspective memory, episodic memory, and associative memory as we're doing this and we've science has made some pretty good breakthroughs here recently in the last 20 years as far as memory is concerned we'll look at some of that research as we go through here but the thinking process is directly connected with and the cognition process directly connected with learning that we studied in the last unit with um, classical and operant conditioning learning is only going to take place if you're able to um, you know perceive things as well and that's sensation and perception all of these things are starting now to kind of build up upon themselves and deliver to us this idea of what we're trying to get to the bottom of today which is cognition and then memory so this is a pizza place that uh, we went to on my birthday I think it was two three years ago and uh, you know I've got my pizza there with my son and I always get pepperoni green peppers and mushroom when I order pizza and a lot of people are like, mushrooms, those are tip. I love pizza with pepperoni, green peppers, and mushroom. It's the three distinctive different flavors and textures. And why do I love that so much? Why, why would somebody pick those three um, toppings? And I, if I had my choice, it would always be those three toppings. I mean, that's pretty much what I want. Maybe some jalapenos every once in a while because I'm a little crazy like that. Um, and Luigi's is a great place in Midtown 
it's kind of reminds me of the old um, kind of mom and pop type places that we used to have in Pennsylvania really good local pizza places that had distinctive flavor to it they have a bocce ball court they have got gelato it's like pretty Italian as a place like Luigi should be so why do I like those three toppings together probably because when I was my son's age or probably a little younger maybe four or five and I don't have a very good memory things when I was a kid but I do remember this my cousin would come over and cut the grass and when he was done cutting the grass he'd get like ten dollars or whatever for for cutting the grass and usually we'd jump in the car and then go downtown and get some pizza and that's what he always put on his so when you're going through the process of ordering dinner or pizza and you know the question everybody hates um, what do you want for dinner and everybody stares at each other. Oh, I don't know. What do you want for dinner? And that thinking process, the mental process of acquiring knowledge or making the decision about what you want to do is difficult sometimes, even on the simplest things. But we take for granted basically how this works, that this mental action and process of acquiring knowledge and then understanding through thought and exercise and the senses to know something and um, if you look at pizza, for example, the cognitive processes are going to encompass everything from knowing and learning, and just or knowing just and remembering what pizza is itself, to recalling what style of topics that you like, top toppings that you like. It does say topics, doesn't it? I gotta change that. It's toppings. That's weird. I probably taught off this slide like three straight years. No one's ever seen that, or they've just never mentioned it in class. So. All of a sudden, now I see it. But style and toppings that you like. And realizing that you're hungry and then organizing plans to have it delivered somewhere. And you, you see some of the different types of pizza that's sitting there. I mean, to me, it's it's always interesting because people are like, Hey, you know, I like New York style pizza or I like... Um, Chicago style pizza to me you should not discriminate between types of pizza isn't that isn't that really wrong if you think about it you know everything about that is wrong it's just discriminatory and to me I just don't think we should discriminate against pizza just like we shouldn't discriminate against people either um, discriminate against pizza is, is wrong in my opinion we should always just welcome the flavor of any pizza and let it just arrive in our mouths and sometimes mine arrives in my mouth and keeps arriving and keeps arriving and keep, no wonder I've gained some weight these days. One of the uh, more memorable places I've gone to eat pizza is not at Frank Pepe's um, Pizzeria Napoli, well, Napolitana it, but it's in New Haven and right around the corner is a place called Sally's Pizza and I think that's where we went uh, a friend of mine, we either went to Pepe or we went to Sally's. I never remember which one, but they have those uh, really distinctive and flavorful brick ovens where they'll slide the pizza in there and they'll pull it out. It's really old style, but Chicago style pizza. I mean, you're digging into that and it's a fork full and it's usually pretty, pretty awesome. I'm not going to play this here for you, but it's in the notes. You can check it out yourself. This is a uh, Anthony Bourdain, a devout New Yorker. I mean, he's a New York kind of guy, but he goes to Chicago, and he's a, a former chef, and, and food, he's a food writer and presenter. He has His show is now on CNN. It used to be on Travel Channel for a long time. It was called No Reservations then, and I think the new show is called No... I can't think of the name of it, but it's on CNN. CNN on Sunday nights usually, but... It's he's real interesting, and he get, travels the planet looking at different food types. So here he's in just in Chicago, and he's trying to realize what um, deep dish pizza is all about. So for somebody to, you know, conceive of eating pizza that's so different from that that they t typically eat, you know, the folded kind of New York street pizza. So for our minds to make sense of the near infinite infinite details that surround us and are a large part of what cognition is dealing with here 
is we make associations and connections. And really, these are happening at the neural level. So don't be, you know, sitting here thinking, well, there's a, a pizza location of the brain. There, there kind of is. It's clusters of neurons, and um, but there's a process of how it gets into the brain. We call that learning, probably. It's where the association happens. But we will, would think about maybe like things that you would find in the kitchen or what kind of topics you, topping you would like there. I did it again with topics. Uh, simple symbols like food and then pizza would be more complex learning associations down the flow of it, which would be like New York style, Chicago style, frozen pizza, or, you know, who ate the damn pizza rolls? Pizza. This is one of my more favorite slides there with the, I swear to God I'm going to shoot you in your stupid face if you ate them all. Um, although important, these cognitive categories are overlapping and not always clearly distinct. And I think you have to keep that in mind. It's maybe that's why we have trouble with memory sometimes. It's not a really a perfect system. It's kind of a, a system that um, is alive and flows. As we've discussed in class, every time you recall something and you remember it, you really write it back to your memory again. And in some way you create that association to be stronger or you could potentially tweak it and maybe even remember it differently later on. So how do we divide the thinking process, the perception, attention, memory, executive functions, which is the action that uh, the frontal lobe would help you do. But we perceive, we see, hear, feel, taste, and smell our surroundings and we're allowing you to respond correctly and appropriately that's perception so you feel hungry and there's no food in the fridge so is that what gets the whole process moving it could be that or it could be you are coming home from school or, or work and all of a sudden you think to yourself man I really want pizza is it because it's a certain day of the week that you typically get it I mean we have pizza on Mondays a lot not that we always have pizza every Monday but we typically have it some Mondays um, and as that cat is saying I love the smell of pizza in the morning excuse me I love the smell of pizza all the time so <laughs> to me it's it's probably uh, the earth's perfect food but memory is gonna store the name of that favorite pizza place that you want to go to or even further it's going to allow you to connect, associate, and maintain like the differences between the types of pizza places that you typically go to. Like for example, whether it's Papa John's or whether it's um, Pizza Hut or whether it is a local place um, in New York like Ray's Pizza. And if you say to somebody in New York, hey, I'm going to Ray's, people will be like, oh, okay, good. I'll, I'll go to Ray's too. We'll get a slice of pizza. The problem is that there are like about a hundred different Ray's pizzas. There's Ray's Pizza without an apostrophe, you see at the bottom left. There's R Famous Ray's, what, which has actually closed. That was a pretty famous one. And then there was Ray's with the apostrophe on Prince Street. There's a lot of Ray's Pizza. There's even places like Not Ray's Pizza, which is stupid, but supposedly in New York City, the water makes the difference. The quality of the tap water is so good that that's what helps the dough uh, to rise and taste really great. So if you've never been in New York City and had a slice of pizza like that, I tell you that's something you should do because it's good stuff. So let's keep calm and keep eating some pizza here. Uh, the executive function is what enables us to plan the logistics such as like timing the pizza to coincide with the beginning of the Super Bowl. And you're going to improvise. You've invited a bunch of people. You think you know who's coming. And further, you think you, that, you, that you know what they want, might want on their pizzas. So you're ordering as the host, and you're trying to guess what toppings everybody would enjoy. That's cognition. The, you're problem solving. Maybe when the pizza's about to come, you're trying to think, how much money do I need for the tip? And you're trying to comp control your impulses, not ruin your appetite by eating like a whole bag of Doritos and while you're waiting for the whole pizza to come. Um, then again, you could eat the bag of Doritos too. I mean, I'm surprised they don't have Dorito pizza already. There's my son at New York Pizzeria in Kingwood and he's got that little 
picture they did this like in first grade or kindergarten we ran all over town taking that and the bottom one here of Louis C.K. this is my favorite image I posted just about every Thanksgiving the meal is not over when I'm full the meal is over when I hate myself and that's pretty much <laughs> pretty much what he would say um, thinking about the attention process and how this works you know, it would kick in by having you shift your focus from reading your psychology textbook, which I'm sure you're doing, you know, to all of a sudden, you know, you've ordered pizza, it's Super Bowl Sunday, but you know, you got psychology to look at here, you're studying for the AP test, or you're uh, kicking in to, to study um, some more to get ready for this new semester, and you're looking at your textbook, and you're, wow, I'm really de deep into this memory stuff and this cognition stuff. Ah, doorbell rings. So you've got to shift your attention then to perceiving that the doorbell has rung and go get it. And then you're going to have to multitask having a slice of pizza with figuring out how your favorite football team maybe is going to come back from an embarrassing early deficit. Also while ignoring the friends all making fun of you or trying to, to heckle you. And then, and then I say, why are they there then if they're going to heckle you? Just tell them to get lost. If you're not a Texans fan, I don't know what you're doing at my house anyway. But the process of cognition, it's the interplay of all of these systems working simultaneously that allow us to adapt to our surroundings and take action towards obtaining our goals. So attention and memory are cognitive functions that help lead to the decision making of the executive functioning. Um, real important that you kind of grasp this a little bit. Another way to think about this is like um, my son and I the computer that I'm recording this on, we built, and it's a, it was a process where I was going to give him my old computer. This was last year over Christmas break. That's how old that picture is. He's getting huge and, and very big. But we bought the case, and we ordered all the parts, and I used my memory of doing this, and it had been a long time, I think since like 2001, since I built a computer. But I wanted to share the experience with him, and he now has... A memory of doing this himself you know putting the processor on the motherboard and locking that down which is always my most tense moment when it, I think it's might might snap or crack and putting the hard drives in and the fan and the wireless card um, snapping the RAM chips the memory down there and just building the whole thing popping it up and getting it working um, hopefully you know he will have a pretty good memory of this but if he did that action quite a lot he would be kind of rehearsing it and reworking it and that's where it really builds into long-term memory if every day if his job ended up being he was going to be someone who would uh, fix or put together computer parts I mean that would be like second nature to him because that's the way our memory works another thing that really can focus you in here and we'll talk about this next time is that if it's an emotional situation if your emotions are running high your amygdala is, is brought into the equation your brain is going to really remember something even stronger because of the emotional connection it's also part of flashbulb memory we'll get there next time this is a little bit of a look into what memory is going to be about and the atkinson schifrin model is the one we need to really focus on and that's the sort of the model of it but there's a lot more underneath the surface. We'll get there next time in the next video. Until then, uh, don't forget to be awesome. See you next time.